Hello and welcome back to another episode of Excel Statistics. Today we will be talking about multiple correlation and regression. And for those of you who have already watched the video on uh, correlation and simple regression, uh, this might look very familiar. The two are essentially the same, just with the addition of uh, more variables. So to start with, let's look at uh, multiple correlation. Uh, here we have a set of data where we start with the first year GPA. And then we have uh, several uh, GRE scores, they're verbal, quantitative, and writing scores. And so we will want to see the correlation between these scores and our GPA. Uh, so we go here to our data and data analysis, select our correlation. And for our input range here, we're going to select our entire block of data. Our data is in columns. I did have labels in my first row. And for my output range, I'm going to Pop this here, column F, and OK. So you see we get our correlation table comes out. We're most interested in this first column here, which says we have a fairly high correlation, uh, and they're all positive. So we expect that as uh, each one of these scores go up on the test, that we would expect to see our first year GPA go up as well. Uh, so that's very similar to what we did with the uh, regular or correlation with just two variables, except we selected uh, a couple of additional columns when we did it. We'll move on and look at uh, multiple regression as well. Back again to our data analysis tool pack, regression. Hit OK, we have our Y range. Now remember our Y range is the variable we are trying to predict. Uh, also known as our dependent variable because we believe it depends upon the value of the other variables. In this case, we are going to select our first year GPA, and which means we believe that our first year GPA is dependent upon the values of our three different parts of our uh, test scores, verbal, quantitative, and writing. I did select my labels and for my output. I'm going to take this right underneath my correlations here. Uh, hitting OK, you see we get our output. And we have our multiple R, this being the correlation um, of all three of our variables to our GPA. So this is a combination of, of all of these three. R squared is just the square value of that. And again, that tells us the percent of variability in our uh, predicted variable, our GPA, that is explained by our three other variables. The adjusted R-square is one we would use uh, in order to compare models against each other um, if we have different numbers of variables. Because of the way a correlation works, as you add more variables, you'll never have uh, your R-squared value go down as you add an additional variable. So to make a proper comparison between a model of, say, one or three variables, uh, you'll want to look at the adjusted R-squared between them. Next, we look down here at our significance F value. Uh, we confirm that that is uh, a value that is below a 0 0.05. Um, that tells us that we have less than a 5% chance of this being a random occurrence, um, a chance that we would have a, a false model. And finally, we look at our coefficients. We've got our intercept. Uh, this tells us that we have minus 7.6 EPA. Uh, should we get... Um, a zero on all parts of our test. And of course, we know that's not really possible, uh, but we also know that on the verbal and the quantitative sections of the GRE exam, the minimum score is actually 130. So you can't actually score a zero on those. Uh, next, we see the coefficients for our verbal and quantitative, uh, the verbal being a negative, which kind of throws a little bit of a red flag up for us. Uh, the quantitative, 0.08 and the writing point zero 0.07. Both of these showing that as our quantitative our writing score goes up, so does our expected GPA. The verbal shows it going down. So part of the problem we have here is that uh, it's known as multicollinearity. Uh, and this is a problem when we have multiple variables that are actually highly correlated to each other. Uh, happen. And as we notice, we've got our correlation between our verbal score and our quantitative shows up as a 0.94. What that ends up doing is it uh, contributes redundant information to the uh, model 
and can throw one of the variables off, uh, making it look worse. So what we'll do here is we'll go back and we'll take a look at our model. We'll find our variable with the highest correlation, here being the quantitative, and we'll run a regression with just that one variable. Back to data analysis, regression. Keep our Y range, our X, so we're gonna change to just this quantitative. I'm gonna change my output to below. Do that again. And now we look and we can compare this adjusted R squared between our two different models. We've got a point. Do a quick copy and paste here. So with just one variable, we have an adjusted R squared 0.756. And for all three variables, it's 0.752. So actually using just one variable is better than using all three of them. Even though our R square value we see is 0.77 for one and 0.81 uh, for three. This is really the steps you'll go through. Uh, it's a little bit of both an art and a science trying to find the right uh, set of variables, even though all three of our variables prove to be very highly correlated to um, to our GPA. Uh, it's not necessarily that we want to use all of them all of the time. We've got to pick and choose and find the right one. And in this case, the right one to use would be just the quantitative. However, you also notice you can use all three of these um, methods by which we did that. Um, we're very similar to using the simple regression, uh, simply selecting the multiple columns when we got to our um, X got to our X uh, input range, all you do is select multiple columns instead of one, and voila, you did a multiple regression. I hope you found this video useful, and we will see you in another episode.